Now we're getting real about food, but not just any kind of food, but the one that is consumed by athletes and people who are hitting the gym. Whether you're cycling or sweating out in the field or even pumping a road, what you eat can make or break you. And that's why I reach out to my colleague, George Okachi, who tells me more on the same. Hi George, thanks for joining us today. And so you can start by giving us a scoop on the supplements theory. Yeah, it's always a controversial topic. I never use any supplement, not because of being among the people who fear the effects of supplements. But um, the key thing is that studies have been done, numerous studies have been done to prove the efficacy of the supplements. They do, they've been proven that they do work after people use them for a number of a period of time. Yeah, so if you are someone who is a big fan of that, and if it can work with your body, why not? Okay, and what's the biggest myth in terms of nutrition-wise and the gym? That there is some food that you will eat and do nothing and expect to have, you know, that trim, trim body. Okay, and in terms of hydration, um, do you normally advise for people to guzzle up water all the time or are you the kind of person who likes to just take it a step at a time? I wouldn't really expect you to guzzle three liters of water and expect a change within your body. Have the body to mind connection like this amount of water when I take it, I feel good. Last question, let's talk about post-workout munchies. When you go to the gym, what's your recovery afterwards? Do you eat chicken or broccoli or do you go for anything that you want that's on the table? Your games in the gym can be either be made better or broken down in the kitchen. Nutrition plays that critical and central role to define what gain you may have. It depends with your, with your goal. Like for me, my goal would be like uh, maybe sometimes I've had moments when I want to trim my body. Then I would make sure that my post workout would be like taking a lot of protein, and that is the only time I'm eating. Thank you so much, George. But hey, did you know that our bodies aren't the only thing that need exercise? Our brains do too, and just like muscles, they need regular workouts to stay healthy and fit. This is what Paul Billard champions are doing in a different part of Uganda. It's all about calculating angles, planning shots, and figuring out how to win in the pool game through focus, strategy, and a little bit of finesse. One has got to be patient and resilient, even when losing. You don't have to lose hope, you've got to keep training. Although many might not consider brain sports as traditional sports, Kenya's Elizabeth Cassidy is changing the narrative. The young upcoming chess master is one of the best in the country and has won several championships. Elizabeth says there are a lot of things to consider becoming a chess master. Before a major tournament, I always sleep early and I'm always nervous, so my dad always motivates me. Elizabeth plays with her father to perfect strategies and tactics. It, it has become very difficult to hire a coach, plus now she is more advanced than me. So me training her is, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a challenge. Whether you're hitting the gym or making strategic moves, exercising with your brain and mind is helpful for a champion because this makes you stay physically and mentally fit. African gamers are uniting, showcasing their skills and embracing the thrill of competition. Whether it's mastering strategy in the League of Legends or showing off lightning fast reflexes in Call of Duty, gaming is blowing up on the continent. In Sub-Saharan Africa alone, there are some 186 million gamers, and that number is rising according to Africa Games Industry reports. And get this, you can make some serious cash from it too. In South Africa, players have raked in millions of dollars by winning tournaments in recent years. In Ivory Coast, there's this incredible culture brewing. Competitive video gaming is starting to become a thing here. 
The mindset has to change because video gaming is now an international industry. The important thing about eSport is that it has the capacity to attract huge audiences who come and watch. A bit like other sports. Today, some games can attract millions of people who connect online just to be able to watch others play. And in Kenya, Sylvia G, aka Queen Arrow, is absolutely killing it in this male-dominated scene. When I started out gaming, a lot of people were indifferent, my parents were indifferent and just even skeptical, like, why are you wasting time gaming, you're better off focusing on your studies, but I know that in the, for a fact that in the West and in Asian countries, it's possible to make a living out of something that you can enjoy. Now she's making a fortune out of her hobby, traveling around the world and promoting her brand, and she hopes more female gamers will fly Kenya's flag high someday. I'd say the best revenge is to be success. I'm just hungry to succeed and I'm also hungry to, you know, just overcome these obstacles that have been in my way since I started my career. That is to say my gender, my, um, I think even my race and where I come from at some point. I'm just determined to overcome those and make sure that I succeed and prove those who are doubting me wrong.